Always a good time when the microphone just breaks at the start of the stream. This is the way we like to be, baby. Oh yeah. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. How are we all doing, guys? How are we all doing? We all happy? We all bouncing off the walls? Hey, Baker, how's it going, brother? Good to see you in the chat. How's business? Hola, Finn. ¿Qué tal? ¿Qué tal? What event has gone live? Is it a sign up for TW? Um, no, it's it's just it's just nothing. It's just nothing. The game is lying to me. How dare it lie? How dare it lie? Do 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 do. All right. So I'm pretty much done with conquest. I just need to. Uh, I need to get nine more wins with this, and I'm there, basically. Which is rather nice. Which was nice. Doot, doot, doo, doo, doo. So we're just going to farm this, because I still need some additional data disks. So, uh, data disks? Yes, data crons is what I mean, not data disks. We're done with the disks. Hey, June, how you doing today, brother? Good to see you again. What's cracking? Bow, round, bow. So we're, we're just going to have fun with Dash and just going kablamo, I think. Yeah, good times. Dash is a good unit in Conquest. Pling, pling, pling. Kind of stuck on feats. It's bad. I'm just complete the sectors, then go for the feats. Yeah, that's the best way to do it, Finn. I always recommend everybody just try to clear conquest first. Worry about the feats later. Oh, I'm sorry, Cammy. Yeah, the Friday night stream is always a late one. I have the utmost faith in you, Finn. I'm sure you can get gold crate at the very least. I had a nice surprise today. I had a nice surprise. On one of my videos, somebody did a... Like a super chat. Like, it's just standard video, and they just tip $2. I was like, ah, I don't think I've ever had somebody tip a video before. That was rather nice of them. It, it gave me the warm and fuzzies. It gave me the warm and fuzzies. Hey, Ardahan. I'm good, mate. How you doing? It was cute. It was. Why am I warm and fuzzy? Because somebody tipped a video of mine earlier today. No, that didn't give me the warm and fuzzies burrito. It was quite funny, though. It did give me a titter. I tittered. I'm glad you're doing well, Adam. As long as I can keep doing this, I shall continue to do this. Good. I might switch over to the old Addis of the Radis. Get a couple of victories in with him. Should we do that now? I think we should do that now. Why Why not do that now? Are Inquisitors worth it if you're not getting Reaver Shards? Because I know they have a lot of Kairos. Uh, it's a good question. So, in the general sense, Inquisitors are always worth it. They are very, very good. However, they are only very, very good with the Reaver. So, it goes back to your question, are they worth it if you're not getting Reaver? I would say, why are you not getting Reaver? Basically. They are a very expensive Chirotech investment. Um, and if it's just Grand Inquisitor, they can do stuff, but it's really not worth the investment. There are a lot better things that you can get out of the game for the same sort of Chiro investment. 15 shards away from the Fury class? That's sick, dude. Got him! They have amazing ships. They are very, they do have two very useful ships. The Scythe and the uh, the Interceptor that they have are very, very useful for one particular um, fleet. New phone, who dis? Hey, RSG. How's Mr. Ranger doing today? Yeah, 
you, you found the harsh reality of zealous ambition versus steadfast. Honestly, dude, that's just that's just the harsh harsh reality of steadfast retribution. It's just such a garbage modifier. This is always good, though. Do 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 do. Alrighty then. Let's go ahead and do our 50 refresh. Do, 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 do. <laughs> How dare you, Nate? How dare you? I blame Finn. Hey, John. How you doing today, buddy? That will be the main reason I get Inquisitors in about three years. <laughs> Ranger. Oh, dear me. Brap. I love Zalus Ambition, guys. Yep, Conquest is... A oh, we finally actually got one. It only took about seven fights to get one Datacron. It was rather painful. We'll upgrade that in a moment. How many battles were that with Adrad? Was that three? Let's see if we can test it one more. See if we can push it one further. Yeah, I'm doing great, John. Thank you. Bloop. Good job, Adrad. I'm proud of you. Um, hey, we got another one. We got another Datacron. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it magical? Probably swap swap it out now to sorty. Do a little bit of sorty action. Did we all see? Did we all see the uh, the news that we saw today? We had a we had an, an announcement poster for Jar Jar, and we had theorized date from a TikTok ad for Galaxy of Heroes, both of which I've discussed with Meathead. <laughs> um, so so hopefully hopefully May the fourth we'll be getting um, Jar Jar, and we've got an idea of what his abilities could be. Well, we we get to see the icons for his abilities at the very least. How many status ambitions do I have right now? Uh, that's just two. Two green ones at the moment, but I'm running two leaders resolve as well. That's some vicious typing. I type rather viciously. Uh, let's throw. Yay! Yeah. Yeah, you like I, I'm running two. I'll show you the data disk setup now. I'm running two green zealous ambitions. I've got. I think I've got one blue, one green leaders resolve as well. Something like that. So blue quickening, blue leaders resolve, blue quickening, blue zealous. Oh, two blue leaders resolve. That's why getting 164 percent max health with what is that? 48 plus 16. 48 plus 16, I mean, what's that, 64? 64% additional speed and 164% additional max health, which is then being converted into additional offense. It does a lot of damage. Who the hell is... Uh, <laughs> the question is, who the hell... Is, I have a lot of people that talk to me, Ranger, all right? God damn it. As a fellow bald man, what shaver do you use? I'm needing a new one. Uh, Cammy, I use a skull shaver. I use a skull shaver. He's a very popular fellow. I am Wolfie. Thank you. You had a crazy run last conquest, yeah? Random question. Is Malak fine at R5 if he's not going for Leviathan? I mean, there's... Listen, if you are really stumped for relic materials, then fine. But generally speaking, regardless, Mal like 
Malak will perform better at higher relic levels, disproportionately so to compared to other characters. You know, he needs to survive. If he survives, he can solo a bunch of stuff and he can hold off the enemy team. Um, it's a useful investment to take him further, but you'll do it eventually as part of the Leviathan um, requirements. And yes, as Karth would say, he's a tank, so that means Relic 9. That's got a sting on the unmentionables. Yes, everything stings today. Uh, look, they're out of stamina. I could use one of these, or I could just, you know, wait. I could wait the several minutes for them to recover that one stamina. Do you get these crazy CG advertising every time you go to the start screen? Yeah, most people do music. Usually there's a pop-up. There's like a limited numbers that they do per day that pop up into your face. Laser hair removal is totally a thing. It is. Um, what was I doing? Oh, yes. Data Cronulus. We've got a couple of more Data Crons to invest in, so let's just throw stuff at the wall. Maybe we'll get lucky. Boop. Accuracy, hell yes. Crit chance, hell yes. So far, like the worst stats we could get. Stacking offense on the level 3 for light side is good, though. Accuracy, god, we are getting trash bloody rolls here. Mm. Jedi. You're a Jedi, huh? Ooh, 18%. No, that's not 18. Ooh, that's a decent chunk of protection, though. Let's see what level 9 we get. We're just doing things for fun now. Jedi Knight Cal testes. Let's do the other one. Gungans next week. Um, Gungans next week. Oh, right. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I imagine we should be getting Boss Nast. Free to flay. Free to flay. Free to flay the Boss Nast. Free to play farmable relatively soon. Ah, I'm out of stuff and things. Do we get the Jar Jar kit today? Potentially, bald man, but I doubt it. It seems to me that you lived your life like a candle in the wind. No, it seems to me that um, things are pointing towards a May the 4th release for Jar Jar because of that advertisement that we saw. But usually when we get this, there's normally something else. Now, I don't know if they're going to leave it and they'll say, Jar Jar's going to be coming to the game on May the 4th. But who knows? Who knows? I could poke Meathead, but I doubt he's going to reveal any information to me. So, Flayers flay on. Free to fillet. <laughs> they try to sell you all the things that you don't need anymore. Such as life music. Get more stuff and things. Problem solved. Yep. Never knowing who to turn to when the rains come in. May the 4th light speed bundle as well. You reckon, John? <laughs> Ranger's just popping off in the chat there. <laughs> yeah, so um, I've asked Meathead to provide us with his own unique take on the artwork here. He, he has yet he has yet to provide us with said artwork but I am ever I'm I'm hopeful that meathead will be providing us his own interpretation of jar jar through the medium of Microsoft paint and I'm sure it will be wonderful I'm really happy that they've given him an ability called how would and uh oh big boomers and he's running away from them we saw warriors and it looks like he's sort of tripping over a B1 who's firing off in a random direction. I would love it if this ability from Jar Jar, when you use it, it forces the target enemy to basic one of their allies. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> For selfish reason, I wouldn't mind a C light speed bundle so you can save some relics on the levy farm. That's fair, Cammy. Three Clone Wars Chewy Shards for all. Maybe. Maybe. So it feels like we'll got, we're going to have a basic that's a single target, a special that's almost certainly going to be an AoE with giant blue balls, and then I really want this to be like you use this special and whoever you target does a basic on its one of its allies. 
Because that would just be fun. That would be fun. Using the Boomer Jaja. Which character would be best to use against if he's going to attack his teammate? Which character... Are you saying, what team would you take him in if you want to get the guy to use a basic against an ally? Using it against anything that's got really high attack power, like Malakos, for example, would be good. How would? It would be great if they got, um, if they got Armored Best in to do the voice lines, because... They did the same with C-3PO, right? So, it would be great if they could get Armored Best in to do the voice. How wide? <laughs> how wide? Yeah, I don't think they'll, they'll have how wide, somehow. Do, do, do. Mm, uno momento, por favor. Just one cornetto. Give it to me. I'm back over. Do we have a character that stuns on a basic? Yeah, quite a few, actually. Quite a few people can stun on a basic. Royal Guard can do it. Zeb can do it if they've got um, um, days. CLS can do it if they've got speed down, I think. Who else can stun on a basic? There's definitely a few. Is it Drogon? Can Drogon stun on a basic? R2-D2 can stun on a basic? It's quite a lot. Dooku? Yeah, Dooku can stun and ability block on a basic. So yeah, there's lots of really good stuff. Giant blue balls. Indeed, Jacob. That's what Jar Jar brings to the game. It's large blue balls. Large, healthy blue balls. Ayla, Ayla can stun on a basic when she crits, absolutely, 100%. The baby Jesus, does he stun on a basic? I'm not even sure. I don't think I've unlocked that character yet. Maybe he has. Still waiting. Still waiting. We need to wait two minutes and 40 seconds to use these guys one more time. One time, one time. Shall I compare you to a kiss from a Rose? Rose Tico standing on a basic? Does she stand on a basic? That's pretty sick. Boop. Oh, look, we only need one more. Amazing. In which case, I better change my data disk setup. Because I need to... Um, I need to have that booming voice data disk on. Is it that one? No, that's Soresu. Booming voice. So I need to get rid of four. Hmm. I mean, that's not particularly easy. I could get rid of a leader's resolve. And a quickening. Do, 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 do. The more I think of it, stranger. The more I think of you, the stranger it feels. Yeah. Now that your rose is in bloom, a light hits the gloom on the gray. Baby! I can't do seal. Can't do seal. My, uh, my, my, my skills do not extend to singing seal songs, apparently. The guy's too much of a good singer. Bloopwez, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the tribe, good sir. The voice of an angel being strangled in an alleyway. Yep. Mm-hmm. Got the booming voice one. Easily in one battle on the B1 when doing the 600 kills. Exactly, Night Fox. It's not a hard one. I just... Yeah, that's what she said. Um, I just didn't want to equip it and then unequip it. So I'll equip it now and then... Forget, ab forget about it. You know what I mean? Is 603 points hard for a... 603 points hard for a 6 point... I'm not sure I follow you. 603 points in what? Oh, sorry. 
you're talking about um, progressing all the way over here. Do you th do I think you can get get this? I like it's very hard to say um, with only JMK. I mean, you don't you don't need a lot of GLs to do this conquest. Saudi team all being support is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean the 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 pass is definitely worth it, regardless. To be honest, mate, but. Um, you should just try and progress as far as you can. This this shouldn't be the goal anyway. It, you know, the portrait is nice and everything. I mean, it's always nice to get more Om Nom Nomicrons. Save these up for Jar Jar. If you had three more days, well, what what's the time constraint, buddy? What, what do you need the days for? What do I need to do? I can't even remember. Attempt to call allies to assist with booming voice. Aha. So we just need a hundred turns. Is is this the one with the No, I'm looking for the one with um Mon Mothma. I think it's sector two? Might be Sector 2. Yeah, Sector 2. We could try it with this one. By the time I finish Conquest, I have three days left to farm for Datacrons. I see. You achieved Gold Crate last time? Nicely done. Hey Storm, how you doing today, buddy? Good to see you. I don't want to do this AOE because I feel like I could potentially just destroy everybody, so... Let's just do a basic. No, no. Hold on to your horses. If you could counterattack, BB, that would be amazing. Oh, they can't counterattack, can they? There's no counterattacking against this team. That's their modifier. Their modifier. No, oh, leave Keller and Beck alone. I need him to survive, you son of a gun. You son of a gun! I was trying to do fancy things, but they've got no stamina. So I'm like, mm, blah. Getting warm in here. Hold up. Ooh. Just flashing you all on stream. Oh. Oh, I was just trying to get greedy. I was just trying to get greedy. Is the Datacron team slower than the other ones? Well, you mean the bonus nodes? I don't think so. But uh, it's not something I really check, Johnny. I don't know if they're slower than, say, you know, um... I don't know if they're slower than, like, a challenge node thingy. But, uh, hey-ho. So let's just get this so we can get this feat done. Yay! Good. Good. And now... And then... Um, we'll just go ahead and... Um, finish up the, the last feat. The last feat. The final feat. Everybody here likes feet, don't they? Feet picks? Or didn't happen? Guess we could go in with like a CLS squad. Actually, I'm probably better off going in with like just a stupidly fast um, team. Maybe we're just going with JML. Jedi. And we'll take in you. 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 Boo 
They're definitely slower than JTR node within Sector 5. <laughs> yeah, JTR, JTR nodes on um, <laughs> in the later sectors, they just have infinite turn meter, really. That's all they have. They have infinite turn meter. What the hell's going on here? What? What? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. There we go. Can I actually target this guy now? I can. Amazing. <laughs> that made no flipping sense whatsoever. Yeah, my name. Do do. Spready. Let's do this. And I would like to swap turns back over to Jummel. Jummel can then do something like this. Mass assist. Call in. Actually, it's probably better to call in JML. Get wrecked, you nerd. Everybody assist. Everybody was kung fu assisting. There we go. Just trying to get through these uh, called to assists now. And I don't want to ramp up too much damage because I don't. I don't care about this. Shall I compare you to a kiss from a rose? The more I get of you, the stranger it feels. Yes. Pass it over here. Passo doble. Pass it back now, y'all. Who are you calling a feat? Yes. A featimate. Galactic challenge idea. New modifier. Oops, all of... Oops, all grievances and the modifier is a summoned what tambour with equal stats and tags to the leader? I'm not sure I follow, Burita. Not sure I follow. Oh, are you saying every unit on the field is General Grievous and there's a summoned what tambour? That sounds awful. Just five Grievouses. Gross. Don't, don't, don't talk such nonsense. The only problem with that is, like, obviously the, the, the forced marked will always be on a Grievous, right? Who's the Alpha Grievous? <laughs> Insta-kill! Yeah! James, 99612! 199? 612? Welcome to the tribe, buddy. How you doing? What and his pets? Turn down for what? And then what can revive Grievous? What can revive the Grivai? Basic. Keep on farming that call to assist, baby. Do, do, do. Boom, boom, boom. Um, eventually we're going to kill these guys. Eventually. Hey, James. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Pass it back. Let's get some additional TM rolling. Keep it up, baby. Keep it up. What is those? What are those stacks? Oh, it's their offense. They, they've got a rather a large amount of offense available to them. How worrisome. Did I, did I break the game by going into ultimate there? Nearly. Nearly broke the game by going into ultimate. Oh, I, I hope we're all very well. I hope we're all very well. Pass it back over here. Yeah, I'm on then. 
Let's do a bit of a spready. Come on, JML. Yeah, we killed the wave. Nearly. We nearly killed the wave. Um. What? This isn't supposed to happen. Um. <laughs> what did we do? <laughs> did we break the game? If we break is enough. I have had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. We we broke it, guys. We we broke the game. It's official. Apparently, we hate crates. This is different to the crate dragon raid. This is not that we hate. The crate dragon raid. We just hate this particular crate. You know, I... I'm just farming for the, um... Hey, what's going on, Rambam? I'm just farming for the, the massively overpowered feat. So, I'm sure we'll do it. I think what did it was using Jedi Knight Cal Kestis's insta-kill ability on this droid whilst everybody else was still alive. I think that's what triggered it. Oh yeah, no, it's it's not a problem. But I just find it really funny. <laughs> hey, what's going on, random? How you doing? What's in the box? What's in the box? We'll never know. We'll never know. This box is is indestructible. Indestructible, Captain Blue Box. Well, I can't back out. I need to let it time out. Actually, no, I, I could just, I could just, um, I could hit this button and we'd, we'd finish, but there's no reason. I might, I, I, I find it quite funny to be wailing. We've armor shredded the box. That, one of these days, one of these days that box is going to break because we're just going to shred all of its armor. You know what I mean? Oh, this is the last battle I need to do, Bazinga. So stamina doesn't matter at this point. Hey Mike, we're doing good, buddy. How you doing? We broke conquest. <laughs> it's just the crate raid, no dragons needed. Exactly. The blue box be like, what did I do? Thicker than Mara Jade, you ain't wrong. I like how that B1 commando droid back there is just like, yep, everything's normal here, move along. Although he is he is sparking. Like he is a, well, a sparkler, a Ferris wheel. Um, I'm surprised he hasn't caught fire at this point. Situation normal? Roger, roger. <laughs> How's tricks, Ram? Yeah, yeah, we're good, brother. We're good. How much protection does that box have? A lot of protection. A lot of, like, I think, I think we're about halfway through it right now. Apparently, the box itself is a command battle droid. It's coded to be an indestructible command battle droid. I'm going to take a screenshot and I'm going to send it to Meathead. Just to, just to let him know. Just let me head now. Ribbed for her pleasure, that box is... Oh, well, pff, I mean, it does have some lines. It does have some lines. The crate's built my pint. Get it, Yoda. <laughs> no, I, I can't. I can't, like, I can't target the B1. The B1 is untargetable. I can click on him. Nothing happens. It's an Everlast. <laughs> oh dear me.
Yes, more armor shreds on the box. I mean, the command battle droid box. Do you think that box is kind of like a transformer? Just B1 command battle droid turns into blue box. We did it. That's red box. It's a mimic. No doubt. No doubt. A really sturdy one. It's a high level mimic, that is. It's like a level 2000 mimic. Ra -ba -ba -ba. Red box. We have red boxed after attacking a blue box. Yay. Queen Andimala. Ad medulla. Medulla oblongata. While we wait for the box to ascend to the box heaven, do I have any GC ideas? I don't know. I don't know. I quite enjoy GCs when they're fun and not crazy stats. Um, ones that I don't enjoy are Jowers and Ewoks. I hate both of those modifiers. They're dumb and very RNG based. What ones are fun? What ones are fun? I like the ones that are a bit of a puzzle, you know? I'm trying to think of some off the top of my head right now. Um... I don't know. I don't know. I think they should experiment more and do stuff like bring in the Reek, bring in the Nexu, bring in, you know, the whatever the other one's called. Um, because those fights are fun. Those boss fights on Geonosis. Why not use existing raid characters? Get the HAAT in, you know? Why not? Bring in a Rankle. Have some fun with it. It's, a, it's only for a, a galactic challenge. Make it something a little bit different so it's not just, oh, we're facing off against, you know, a random faction. Bring in a boss node, you know? Queen Waterballer, damn it! <laughs> Queen Water... Waterballer... <laughs> Queen Waterbell end! We need a good puzzle again. Yeah, I thought we were gonna... I thought there was rumours of a puzzle getting worked on. Um, but we didn't get anything. Look at this. 13 Zeta Mats. 13 Zeta Mats. 37 Omicron abilities. Jar Jar is most likely going to have three Zetas. And if he's coming in about three weeks, I'm not going to be able to fully Zeta him. I'm not going to be able to fully Zeta him unless the Jawa scavenger deal gives us a bunch of uh, Zetas. And by us, I mean me. And by me, I mean me. Yeah, CLS is the best way to get blinds. I have 80 Zeta mats, but having a... Yeah, I did I did the Gungans on Wednesday, Wolfie. I just... Uh, I went balls deep on the Gungans. I went blue balls deep on Gungans. And I just applied all the Zetas. I was like, yep. Splurge. I splurged 80 Zetas on them. So, it might have been a mistake. Might have been a mistake. We'll, we'll have to find out. Balls deep and they're still blue. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I think you're doing it wrong. I just can't hack it sometimes, Wolfie, do you know what I mean? Sometimes, just can't hack it. I, I need these daily scavenger deals to give me Zeta mats. I, like, this one here, I've had this 1600 one offer me seven Zeta mats. And I'm like, gib. Gib me the Zeta mats. Because I need them. Oh, for sure, Havorius. For sure. Inquisitors can do blinds, I believe. That's against Jedi in particular, right? The AoE from 8th Brother. Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen them since... When was I... Like... It was when I was completely broke. Completely ran out of Zeta mats. Um, and that might have been right after Leia. Right after I unlocked Leia. But I'm 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 relatively certain that these daily deals see what's in your account and what you favorited and what you what you're low on. So the only way to get Zeta Mats is if you have no Zeta Mats. Or you have very few. You know? And you've got a bunch of characters favorited that have got unused Zetas. That's how I think it triggers. Um There's definitely some sort of AI learning going on for these J daily deals. I'm I'm pretty certain they're using AI to um, generate deals for people based on what they need. 
and then it's going to be it's probably got some background learning based on based on the offers that it it provides how likely are people to buy it and the ones that people buy more frequently start showing up more frequently you still got nada sucks wolfie do 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 the blue box attacked you what <laughs> You have 282 Zeta mats and 88 Omicron mats. But don't tell my guild they'll make you... Boma, why do you have so many Zeta mats and can you give them to me, please? I'll take your Omicron mats as well, buddy. Boma over here. Hey, Reginald, how you doing, buddy? Boma over here just stockpiling the world supply of Zeta mats right now. This is why we have Zeta shortages. This is why we have Zeta shortages. It's because people like Boma. Mm -hmm. People like Boma in the world... Just ruining it for everybody else. You heard. Um, but now we're officially done with Conquest. I just need to spend all my refreshes getting Datacron materials. Have I ever passed on a Zetamat? If you bought the Zetamats before, surely they don't, uh, they'd offer it more frequently. I have passed on them in the past, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I haven't, I haven't picked them up every single time. Because I haven't always needed them. And sometimes it's been more important to save the crystals. So, yeah. I've got 200 you can just have. Yes, please, Lee. I'll take it. I'll take it, buddy. If that were true, we would all favorite characters that need Omis. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I'm pretty sure Omi mats can't appear in... Uh, in daily scavenger deals. I've never seen an Omi mat in daily scavenger deals. So uh, I, I, would, I would take that as... Are you, you guys going to actually kill these flipping geos or what? Holy moly. Let's pass it over here. Apparently not. Apparently not. Oh. Um. Yep. Harpy. Let's gain some turn meter, I guess. I'm just gonna increase his cooldown so he doesn't immediately. Okay, he's dead. It's fine. Gosh almighty! Honestly, anyone low on credits? There's a guy in my guild who has one billion. Why? I don't have a clue. I, I would take his credits. I, you know, I wouldn't even be greedy. I'd be like, can I just have like 10% of your credits and I'll be happy. 213. I, I remember the days when I had a big stockpile of Zeta mats. I remember those days. And now I'm just a little broke scribble. Struggling to make his way in the universe. Let's go Hut Cartel. Pew, 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 pew. You only have 600 million. Reginald has got 1.33 billion. Guys, do you not spend your credits? It doesn't give you anything for keeping hold of them. There's nothing to spend it on after 11 mil? Reginald. Come on now. Don't, don't be spreading lies and deceit. Don't be spreading lies and deceit. Nothing to spend it on after 11 million. Jesus. Wolfie's got it. Mods, 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 mods. I defy. I've got 11 point... What am I at? 11.4? I think I'm at 11.4 million. And I usually hover around 30 to 40 million. There's always a mod to fail on, yes. Always a mod to fail on. Well, well. I don't like doing this with... Uh, what is it? Um, mass not massively overpowered. Booming voice. It's just it's just not particularly fun. I prefer having two leaders resolve and a bunch of uh, zealous ambition equipped. Mod depression, baby. I buy gear I need and maybe a mod, but it doesn't make an impact. Because you're not buying enough of them. 
not buying enough of them. That's why. Mods can drain your your um, uh, your credit stockpile very, very quickly. <laughs> like, just leveling up a bunch of mods to level 12 will cost millions. Getting a bit short on, short on ship credits. Yep. Yeah, well, you don't you don't earn nearly as many ship credits as you do standard credits. But yeah. See, look, I'm 11.4 million GP. See, where is there? 11.4 million GP. My credit game, I've got 31 million, 31 million credits. Always buy these, obviously, but. Um, you can very quickly blow through credits. Very quickly. And you should. There's no reason to have anything more than what you need, right? So if you like to keep, I don't know, enough credits to take an entire team to level 65, 65, 85, I can, I know the levels. That's like 6.2 million credits per character, right? So you need maybe 35 to 40 million credits in your back pocket, just in case you need to level 85 an entire team. Um, but yeah, apart from that, like there's no point having 100 million credits. It doesn't do anything for you. Might as well just spend it. Just spend it. Go over to the mod store and be like, uh, is there anything here? And I mean, that's a five speed, but it's a blue. I wouldn't buy that one. If any of these had got them, I'd be like, yep, yeah, boom. And then you can get rid of 10% of my current fleet credits. And then, you know, you're triple refreshing your mod energy every day and you're getting your mod slicing materials and then you farm a bunch of mods over here, a bunch of speed mods. You just blow all your energy on here. You level up 20 mods to level 12 and you've spent 5 million credits every single day, you know, stuff like that. It's very easy to do and it's something that everybody should do, really. If they sold Chirotech for credits, I'm game. Yeah, like... I don't know what it would be. What, what would it be? Chirotech. I think they have done in the weekly shipments before. You know, for these here, they'll be like, yeah, I'll, I'll sell you one Chirotech for 10 million credits. You're like, oh. <laughs> Ooh. I had the offer pop up for the light side currency packs again. It was like, what is it? Nine, 999 for 100 light side tokens. I was like, that's awesome. Such good value. Hey, Vader. You farm in Bad Batch? Good. No, not a hundred million. I said a billion and it's real. I don't know why though. I know. Oh. Uh, what do I spend my Mark 1 credits on? The point I have hundreds. Are you talking about guild credits? Mark 1 raid tokens? Is that what you're talking about, buddy? Demiurge? You had the dark side currency pop up yesterday. Pointless having all the GLs. Yeah, pretty much. You've got 900 million normal credits and 400 million. Oh, Jesus, Mol. <laughs> 400 million fleet credits. You're ready for any fleet. Any fleet that comes out. Because fleet is like when a new capital ship drops, that's expensive, man. It's like 10 million credits just to level it up. 10 million fleet credits. Fortunately, when you get to the point that you've literally got every ship in the game, it becomes less of an issue. Um, but yeah. It's it's a very expensive endeavor. 3 million right now? Oof. 9.3 mil to go. Yeah, raid tokens. Okay, so yeah. Like, this is very valuable. It's It's the second best token. I don't know, it's hard to say. So I always, 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 always buy... Um, credits, because I always need credits. The only way that I can hover around 30 million credits is by buying this every single time. <laughs> like, 1 million credits, that doesn't even buy me one mod from the store. So I'm like, yep, I buy that every single time. And apart from that, I like to keep, make sure that everything that I see here typically stays above 200. If every single piece of gear is above 200, I feel pretty happy. And if it's not, then I usually buy it up. There's certain things that have got incredibly high value to them. So, you know, like, chat at com links, they could be a real pain in the ass. Quite a lot of characters need them, and they need them 50 pieces at a time. So I like to have a little bit higher surplus than that. 
I'm I'm counting that as 200, even though it's not, because I don't want to spend 1400 Mark ones on it. Um, if we see stuff like the Mark III Sienna holo, holo projectors, you can never have too many of them. Uh, where are they? Let's see if we can find any here. No, we don't have any of the Mark III's here, but they're incredibly valuable just for breaking down into relic materials. And then it's basically anything that you need. Because if I was to look at this and say, oh, I've got 300 stun cuffs, that's way more than enough. But I could check that out and I could go to, you know, Hot Utils or something like that. Let me jump into Hot Utils and just have a look. Come on, Hot Utils, load. And go over to the Sugar Events gear. Now this, this here is showing me every single character in the game. What would it cost me to take every character in the game to gear 12 minimum, right? If I go down here and we arrange by needed, I still need nearly 7,000 Mark III Carbantes. That's 148,000 Mark I guild tokens. It's never a waste for me to buy Carbantes or Mark III Stun Cuffs or Mark VIII Biotech Implants or Stun Guns or, you know, you know what I mean? Like, you, there's always something that's valuable to buy with that credit. So, super, super valuable. Absolutely, Vader. Like, if, of course you buy mods from the store. You do the same, but lately not a lot to upgrade, so I'm keeping everything over 700. That's fair, Smash. That's fair. Hey, what's going on, Papa? How you doing, man? The mods are overpriced there? What do you mean? If, like, buying a mod from the mod store? Yeah, it's incredibly expensive, right? Incredibly expensive. But we've already had several people in the chat right now talking about having hundreds of millions of credits or even billions of credits because they don't do stuff like this. Is this expensive? Very. Should a player in the early game who's really struggling with credit crunch be worrying about mods in the mod store? No. Absolutely not. There are, there are more cost-efficient ways of farming mods than through the mod store. The benefit of the mod store is you can find very, very valuable mods that make all of a sudden getting a 25 plus speed secondary a lot more realistic, right? So if this mod here was gold instead of blue and it had a five speed on it, absolutely, I'd buy it 100% at the time, every time. Because that is a chance at a 25 plus speed secondary mod for just buying it and taking it to level 12. Is it expensive? Absolutely. Is it worth it? 100% of the time. Unless, like I said, unless you are really, really struggling, like you can't even level your characters for your farm, then maybe mod store buying is not for you. But once you get to the point that you don't really worry about credits for leveling up characters and equipping gear and buying abilities, this is where your credits go. This is, this is, your, this is your credit sink, basically. Modding. It's nothing to do with free-to-play, Vader. Nothing to do with free-to-play. You know, I was a I was a free-to-play player not so long ago, and I would very frequently buy mods out of the mod store. Very frequently. Yeah. Like, if we look at my roster right now, just go to the bottom. Yeah, I've got a couple of people that I could take to 85, but there's no point in me wasting my credits doing it. There are also a bunch of characters that... <laughs> Don't really have a whole lot of value in my roster right now. So where else am I going to spend my credits? Apart from buying mods, rolling mods, leveling up mods. Yeah, I've got a couple of characters to level up, but that's about it. So that's where I... I yeah, that's that's the best credit sink in the game. Mark 1 raid currency? Yeah, we were talking about where to spend it. You buy whatever is speed 4 plus? Yeah, that's fair, Mal. I mean, when you've got 800 million credits, you probably should. <laughs> All depends on your needs. You've been doing project after project, so it's mostly purple gear. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's that, that's the massive benefit of the Mark One Guild currency is it gives you such a good, like, exchange rate, as it were, for um, gives you a really good exchange rate. Oh, actually, let's do gas fiber first. That'll be fun. Gives you a really good exchange rate for those core gear pieces. Your stun guns, your carbantes, your stun cuffs. You know, you, you get a really good return. You can get hundreds of them. Like, 
if you think back to the days before we had Great Dragon Raid and this sort of thing, how awful the Cub Anti Stun Gun Stun Cuff farm was, that bottleneck was massive. And raids had really, like, solved that. You try to spend it. Keep on trying, buddy. I'd love to take a few raids where you can just buy credits and mark three holo projectors. Hell yeah. You'll get there. Ugh, this 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 is just sucky. Goes to show how important data disk setups are. I mean Echo decides to just kill the entire team. Good on you, Echo. Resource management. Most of the guild are free to play or very little spenders. Some people have hordes of all kinds of resources for different reasons. Of course, yeah. I'm just saying that credits should never be something that somebody hoards. There's no reason to hoard credits. Um, hoarding credits is shooting yourself in the foot, basically. Because that could be mods, and mods make a real tangible difference to everybody's rosters. You know? A lot of the, a lot of the people that talk about, you know, that will comment on, on my YouTube videos for either for how to do stuff on conquest right or how to beat galactic challenges or how to beat particular missions on legendary unlocks and they're like oh i just don't have the mods these are also the people with millions worth of credits that don't buy mods from the mod store it's like not universally obvious obviously but the, the general sentiment stands so that's where you should be spending your mods yeah, maybe we could drop padme and throw in ayla or something or maybe we'll throw in snips full yeah, that'll do. Last time we talked, I know I'm close to Ray, but unlocking Bane next, so you're going to make some time to replenish a lot of your stock. Yeah, makes sense. The crunch is gone for Purple Gear. I mean... It's it's really weird to say. I mean, we, we just looked at it, right? We just looked at it. Over here, this is me at 11.4 million. I still need nearly 7,000 Carbantes. That's still 148,000 Mark 1 raid tokens without looking at any other gear. 140,000. And what do we get? We get like eight? Eight and a half thousand? 148,346. Divide, let's just round it up to 9,000. That's still 16 weeks of raiding and exclusively buying just carb antis. I would say that the bottleneck has gone, but it's still, you still need a hell of a lot of that gear. Carbantes is still the most required gear piece in the game. It's just the accessibility of it is a lot easier now. You consider 23 million gold hoarding for me, but I do it anyway? Um, yeah. I mean, you're in a different part of the game right now. The dark days before the Empire. Before the raid store. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, it was a whole different beast back then. I remember, like, the best source of getting Carbantes used to be the weekly challenges, where you could get, like, 20, 20 bits of Carbanti. You get 16.5k? Oh, yeah, sorry. The 8k was the, the when it was twice a week, right? So, 16k. So, okay, so it's it's 8 weeks, then. It's 8 weeks instead of, um, instead of 16. That's still a lot. That's 2 months exclusively of just buying Carbantes, you know? <laughs> yeah, with the 10-minute cooldown. Oh, I don't miss that. I don't miss that. Boom, boom. Boom. Back when even car buying campanties with money was a bad idea. You just gave up hope. You give enough... Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a funny old world, isn't it? It's a funny old world. Should we go Résistance? I don't know. Just throw in any old stuff. This is just so there's something playing on in the background, guys. While we chill. While we chill and have a chat. Chill and have a chit-chat. Yeah. It's funny. Like, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. Because the game shouldn't persist the same bottlenecks for years and years and years and years and years. Right? It shouldn't. Because there should be progression ultimately. Um, and that is what we are seeing, 
It's just it took about five years for the Carbanti stun gun bottleneck to to sort of ease. How much fleet currency should be hoarded to prepare for the next possible capital ship? Uh, honestly, mate, um, I would say you probably want like 30 million fleet credits. You need like you need about I think it's about 10 million just to sort out a capital ship alone. To, and that's just like the stars, <laughs> you know, just the stars to seven star, let alone all the other ships that because we don't know, we might get three new three new ships that need to go into a fleet. So you need to have like up to upwards of 10 million per ship, 30 million plus the capital ship, another 10 million. Then you need to think about the abilities and leveling them up and stuff like that. It's it gets very expensive. 11 mil to max capital ship to level 85. Thank you. It's been a while since I've done it. Do 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 do. Kyrotex took the place of Mark V stun guns. Well, yeah, pretty much. You just replace one one bottleneck with another. You, there needs to be a bottleneck. There has to be a bottleneck in the game. It makes sense from a gameplay loop perspective to have something to slow down the players. Otherwise, everybody would just get everything maxed out immediately, right? Bottlenecks are not inherently a bad thing. They just control and set the pace of the game. Unless you guys just want to live in a world where whenever you get a character, you can just immediately take him up to max level, get all the abilities on them immediately, um, and not have to worry about it. You know? Trying to figure out how much to spend on mods, and I'm making sure I'm prepared. A good way to be born. You'd rather have bottlenecks than absurd power creep? Um, yeah. I mean, all makes sense. That's just basic here. Apparently the mole, even with all of his speed, was not was not fast enough to uh, to take a turn. Even though he has got what, 30% additional speed, something like that. I suppose that does st still kind of make sense. Still waiting for Mold to take his very first turn. <laughs> just just his first turn. All right, well, we got one turn. I should have just thrown in what, shouldn't I? Should have just thrown in what. That would have made more sense. Actually, no, it wouldn't because it would have ruined the dark side Mando setup, wouldn't it? Target you, I, I doubt we're going to get anything done here. Yeah, fudge that. Geos are annoying? Yes. The horde is massive. Yeah, I, I've, I wouldn't say I'm, I've got a massive horde right now because I have been spending on the Gungans as they've becoming available. So there, there is that. That's kind of drained my resources and I definitely don't have... Ooh, let's do Inquisitors, actually. Inquisitors always Shrek face. Um, I don't have masses and masses of hoarded Chirotech and, and all sorts of business. You saw my Zeta pile. It's empty. And my right now, my signal data has dropped all the way down because I'm farming the Stap and it's taken forever and it's making me cry. But otherwise, I haven't really been spending on anything that isn't Gungans. Peace out, burrito. We need a new bottleneck. Make ability map mark ones the strength. <laughs> I I remember being in the early game and the the purple ability mats were a real bottleneck. You know, I remember being in the game and I was like, God, I can't level up this ability to level five. You know, and you'd have to wait for the the weekly events. You know. Stuff like that, just to be able to apply a purple ability mat. And now you like you got thousands of them. It's um, sim tickets used to be an issue, you know. Hey, Drukey, what's up, man?
Those days were miserable. Yeah. Your brother is like 4 million and he's still stuck on purple ability upgrades. And you're still at 2k and your alt is at 1.5 million. Wow. You remember spending crystals on... Oh, oh, Sector 7. Ouch, bro. He insists that I will run out eventually, but that hasn't happened yet. Run out of purple mats? It, it, comes, to, it comes to a point where you shouldn't run out of purple mats. It's very much an early game uh, bottleneck, purple ability mats. The funny thing I find is that Omega mats, for me, I still I, I don't have enough to apply every ability in the game. I'm not sure to. I've got like 300 of them, but I need more. I need more if I actually want to apply everything. It's weird. Where is it? If I go over here and I go to, is it player and farming? This is two days old data, but that's fine. It's not relevant, really. Um, here we go. Total needed... Ah, remaining over here. So, I need 1,400 more Omicrons. But yeah, um, yellow Omega ability materials. I still need 1,156. I still I need an extra thousand one hundred Omega materials to get all the Omega abilities. I, I have three hundred and twenty eight of them, but I still need quite a lot more. So I, you know, that's really that's really weird when I think about it. I don't think I'll ever be in a position where I'm like, crap, I don't have the Omega abilities to do it. I think, based on the rate at which characters are coming out and the rate at which I'm gearing characters, I don't think I'll ever run out. But it's just weird to think that I don't have enough. Do, do. Got slacker yesterday. Nice one, Drew. Only gear 10 because of the Cairo Crunch. Hope you'll have him ready soon. Oh, I hope so, buddy. Congratulations on your slacker unlock, my brother. Oh, yeah. Still need a boatload of Zetas. That is just so gross. But I'm 82% of the way done with Zeta mats. Everything else, all the other ability materials, the grind is done. Relic 9 and still not enough for mech. <laughs> That's good, Wolfie. I like it. I like it. <laughs> oh, dear me. So, yeah. It's a funny old world we live in. It's a funny world. Give him half a chance, I bet he'd rob you if he can. You can see it in his eyes, yeah, that he's got a nasty plan. He's a scumbag, don't you know? He's a scumbag, don't you know? Yeah. Missing 33 Zetas. 33 whole Zetas. I can live with that. I can live with that. Yeah, it's a good song, AC. Uh, yeah, Vader, I did have that bottleneck originally. You used to be... I used to have to be very careful about who I apply reinforcement abilities to in the early game, but it does... The, the thing with Fleet is the rate at which Capital Games brings out new ships is very slow compared to characters. So you kind of build up quite a lot of Fleet materials quite quickly. It's, it's it's very pronounced in the early game because you just get a crap load of ships. You get loads of them. And you're like, oh my god, I've got to upgrade everything. Um, but once you finish ships, it's like... And it doesn't take super long to finish ships. You're almost the same GP and I have over a thousand mega Omegas. You will be done eventually doing all the events. The only ones I need to apply are linked with Zetas. Yeah. Oh no, I know. Like, eventually it'll be done. It's it's less about GP and it's probably more around time playing. How long have you been playing, Smash? How old is your roster? Prestige is a problem for a while. Yeah, but I mean that's that's the same thing again, really, with prestige. Is it like as long as you 
have been focusing on using your squad arena currency to buy um, prestige when you needed it. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Again, it's an early game thing. Yep, it's it's probably more pronounced these days, actually, because in the past, when crystals were in squad arena, it used to be so important to climb to the top of squad arena, and you'd be getting a crap load. You get like 400, I think. No, 900. How many do you get? I can't even remember. I don't even look at it anymore because fleet squad arena just doesn't matter anymore. But it used to be climbing to first in squad arena was so important. You get 500 crystals a day. Do you know what I mean? But it also gave you your squad arena tokens, which you would then be able to feed into getting prestige. So when I was early game, I used to make sure I was hitting first in squad arena, completely free to play. It's completely possible. It used to be possible. Now it's... Now it's a whole mess of shit. Um, but yeah, you used to go in there and it would be Squad Arena and it'd be like, ah, prestige. Buy that. Now I have every single capital ship and I still got 4,600. You need about 2,200-ish prestige, I think, for a seven-star capital ship to max it out. So it's like, I always made sure that I had enough for two capital ships, basically. So if one came out or if two came out at the same time, I know I've got the prestige there to sit back and be like, done. After that, you can focus on getting your characters. These go super, super quick these days. Um, there are some bits of gear here that is quite worthwhile, but usually I just use it on character shards to convert into um, shard shop currency. Started a month after launch. Yeah, that'll be why then. <laughs> that'll be why, Smash. You've got like three years of farming on me. It's a long time to be getting those weekly events and stuff. Poor Cubs. Yeah, I remember, Lee. I remember. Yeah. Was it Negotiator he got? I can't remember what capital ship he unlocked. Was it Negotiator or was, or was it more recent than that? Was it like the Profundity that he unlocked day one and he couldn't level up the abilities? That's just brutal, that is. That's absolutely brutal. Like, don't don't get caught with your prestige down, guys. Got to make sure you keep your prestige up. It was, it was one of the newer ships, was it, Wolfie? Executor, gotcha. Yeah, and that's so, like you. Oh, it, it's just such it's such a ruinous thing to have happen, isn't it? Because capital ships are great and everything, but without their abilities, it's so much harder to do anything. And it's like prestige was not one of those things that you can just like get loads of instantly. Like I said, you you can buy. Essentially, you can buy 10, maybe 20 a day. Let's round it off to 15 a day. I know it'll be, you know, 600 one day and then you'll be able to get two the next day. But that's not a lot when you need 2,000 for a capital ship. Not a lot at all. You know? Can't really see them because I've already maxed everything out on every ship. Or at least on every capital ship. There could be some normal ships that I just don't have stuff on. No idea. Here we go. Jedi Consular Starfighter. I haven't got this guy leveled up. Poor Jedi Consular. What do we think, guys? Jedi Consular going to be a requirement inside the, uh, the Naboo raid? Did he wail for it too? Yep. Did it do... You think he's a Relic 9? Yeah, that's not going to happen. Our next one is Merin. We've got Merin next on the chopping block. You hope so? Yours is R8 for platoons? That's kind of sick, though. I hear, his, I hear his ship is actually pretty good. Like, not something you should focus on early game, but, you know, in the late game, it's decent to have. Look at that death steer from Ewok Scout. This thing steers directly into your soul and is like, I'm going to eat your spleen. Over the fire with marshmallows for dessert. Gak token, 
was also an issue with gas. A lot of guys... Oh, God, yeah, that, that caught loads of people out, Mole. I remember the controversy around gas when he first came out. Legendary character that you... And he was one of the biggest farms for a legendary unlock. Like, you, you needed so many characters to unlock gas. And you get him, and you get him at five stars, and you need a bunch of get one to seven star him. Same for Malak, right? When the new capital ships arrives, do you think we'll have to put four ships on defense? Uh, honestly, Ardahan, I thought that was coming with Leviathan. I think it's probably overdue. What wizardry did you pull to end with a useful character as your sub goal? I don't know, Demiurge. Sometimes Karth, like, says what unit it's going to be and magically it happens. I don't know how. But I think Karth has had, like, the last three R9 sub goals work out. He usually says, this character or I riot, and it shifts the polls somehow. Maybe Karth hacks the system, I don't know. You think you dropped $40 to unlock him? By far the most you've ever spent on a character? Skate, I've spent so much money on this game in the last six months, it's unreal. It's unreal. I never would have thought I'd have spent this much money on a mobile game. Or on any game. Hundreds. I mean, we we spent a volt and a half on every single Gungan. So, you know, that like $150 per Gungan, basically. Four of them. $600 over the, since January. <laughs> Jesus. That's a lot of money. Got smashed a couple of weeks ago and took your level 70 purple Jedi Consular to gear 13 because he's Galactic Republic. Darren, I love it, mate. Getting him the second time came around and had the gear corded up and was able to 7-star him before the other guys. That wailed on him. <laughs> I did something similar. I, I was not ready for the first time for gas. Um, at that point, I, I was still 100% free to play. Um, but... Because I, I couldn't get him the first time around. I think I got him the second time around. And at that point, everybody knew he was a get character. So I was just hoarding up. Yeah, get one. Get one currency. I think it, the same thing happened with Malak as well. Because I missed Malak on the first time. And then I had to wait like the 125 days or whatever it was for him to come back. Um... But I knew then, I knew then I needed a hoard get currency. So from that point onwards, I always made sure that I had, was it like 25,000 get you needed or something stupid like that? Um, yeah, I just made sure I kept it just in case we got another epic confrontation that required it, you know? Those eyes are why all the Ewoks shall burn. Indeed, Ranger. 70k. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking fleet. It's You can tell how long it's been, guys. How long it's been since I had to do that. Long time. I don't know if I can even see it. Yeah, God, that's so expensive, isn't it? 1,900 for five shards. You need 185, right? So. Oh, well. 85 divide... Uh, 185 divided by five. 37 times 1,900. 70k get one. For gas, at least. That's a lot of get. That's a lot of get. Bump, bump, dump, dump. 64,000? What did I have? 70,000? You get them at 5 star, don't you? So it's 185 tokens. 185 shards left. 185 divided by 5. 37 times 1900. 70k. Unless you had 10 additional gifted. Reddit was wrong. Um, it could be that you got gifted 10 additional shards. There was, there was like, was it, um, uh, it might have been a May the 4th or it might have been anniversary of Swigger where they donated, they gave out 10 free shards of General Skywalker. So it kind of depends. <laughs> the, the, it's a rough farm. Like, it just feels rough, I think. I think the, the, I think the drop rates are actually on point for me so far, but it just feels so rough. You know, I really dislike wasting time where I could be farming signal data. 
Um, and we've still got most of it to go. I still need 180 shards of the stamp. It's like, pain. You're on 31 out of uh, 85 on step. Nice. Quite a bit ahead of me, Halsey. Old era Assassin's Creed or new era Assassin's Creed? Uh, I've never really been a massive Assassin's Creed player. I played the very first game when it came out on the PlayStation 3, I want to say. And it was fun, but very repetitive. I remember I burned out way before I could finish that game. The only other one that I played after that was Black Flag. And Black Flag, I thought, was really good. But I think it's just because I really liked the pirate theme and I liked being able to go around on a boat. I thought that I thought it was cool. Plus, the main character was Welsh, so I was like, nifty. Um, so I think I think that came into play a little bit, and then I played a little bit of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And I think it just, it, it feels like the creative direction on Assassin's Creed games kind of changed. Because the, the very first game obviously had sci-fi elements, but it was supposed to be rooted in what's real. And then we've gone from that to like mythical creatures and magic and stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm not against it. But it feels like, creatively speaking, it took a very different turn. It felt like the first game was supposed to be, like, not historically accurate, but based in history and based in plausibility, right? And I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm even mad at it. It's just it feels very different, you know. Stap has been rough farming for you, Wolfie. Naught out of seven, naught out of eight, and then two out of seven. Ugh, gross. Cantina is so much quicker than hard nodes. It really is, Demiurge. It really is. It's like an eight energy, eight energy Cantina farm is done in like two weeks. It's great. It's really good. Do, 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 do. Who should we go in with? Lord Vader. Let's throw in more. Yeah, it sucks. It really does suck that Cantina stops our ability to get signal data. But again, I've already spoken about how, you know, farms need to be in the game. Uh, fa well, not, not farms, specifically farms, but bottlenecks need to be in the game. And I think choice should matter as well. But um, it's just very, very painful, I guess, when you're like, oh man, I really wanted to farm some signal data. How can I relic up these characters? Whoop, whoop. That was nice of Thrawn to turn me to swap over to uh, Maul there. And Maul did all of his attacks on that GBA, and it did, like, nothing. That's great. Oh. He should have his cooldowns increased by Maul, so he shouldn't be able to summon. Yeah, good. Oh! Thrawn fractured the, li the life out of that GBA. AC2 is a massive step up from AC1. I hear a lot of people saying they liked Ezio. That's when you rage refresh the 200s. Ugh. Can I describe my favorite Star Wars game? As in, theoretical one, Beaver? Or one that actually exists? Because we're playing the one that exists. It's Galaxy of Heroes, baby. Um, still take a cantina farm over a hard farm? Um, I don't mind how it's implemented at the moment. Where it's like you occasionally get a cantina farm. I would if if every single character was a cantina farm, I wouldn't like it because you'd never be able to farm signal data, and that would suck. Well, not never, but you know, if you think about the current rate at which they're releasing characters, we're getting 
one every three weeks or so. If every single character went to a cantina farm and they were all 10 or above energy, you would literally be farming one cantina farm to the next cantina farm to the next cantina farm to the next cantina farm until you finished every single marquee character, and that would suck. That would make trying to make a legendary first round of unlock very difficult. Lady Castle turns 39 tomorrow? Happy birthday to Lady Castle! Send us some love from the tribe. Swigger is my favorite? No, Swigger is not my favorite. I was being, uh, I was being facetious. I was being facetious. I'm not even sure. I, like, I... It's, it's hard to say what my favorite Star Wars game would be. When I think about it, I think Jedi Knight Outcast. But the, it could well be that I just have got really good nostalgia for that game. And it's probably not even that great of a game. I haven't played it in years. But I used to love the Jedi Knight Academy Jedi Knight Outcast games. Um, I really enjoyed them. You know, the Dark Forces games were great. KOTOR for Wolfie. I See, I came very late to KOTOR, so I don't have the same fondness. Like I said, I can fully admit that I have nostalgic representation with the Jedi Knight games. So I probably overestimate how good those games actually are, because I, I, like, I have the memories of growing up as a kid playing those games and playing online and going into lobbies and stuff like that. And, you know having fun playing Gen Night games and they were great. I didn't grow up with KOTOR, I completely missed KOTOR. So I only played KOTOR like two years ago. And whilst I, I can appreciate it's a pretty well-made game and it's enjoyable, obviously mechanically speaking, it's very dated at this point and I'm not going to be like, wow, this game is the best game ever. So it, to me, it doesn't have the same effect. I'm, I'm not that like... Wow, this is amazing. It's obviously a good game. It's fun. It's enjoyable. And I probably would have loved the hell out of it if I played it as a teenager. But I didn't. Um, so, yeah. Because I, I, played, I played the Dark Forces 2 game, which was Jedi Knight. And then there was Revenge of the... Not Revenge of the Sith. It was um, Mysteries of the Sith. Sorry. Mysteries of the Sith was the expansion pack that they released for that. I played and completed both of them. Then I played the Jedi Outcast game. Then Academy came out after that. And honestly, Academy was... Was fun and everything. But you played a custom-made character. And I liked playing as Karl Katarn. You know, I like I enjoyed playing as Karl Katarn in, in Outcast. So I think I preferred Outcast even if Academy was probably mechanically a better game. Not even sure I like Swiver. Yeah, it's more of a, a love-hate relationship. Fallen Order or Survivor? I still need to finish off Survivor. I, I really did enjoy Fallen Order. I thought Fallen Order was a very good game. Shadow of the Empire for the N64? I never had an N64, you know, Burma. Original Battlefront 2. Hmm? Nobody actually likes work. <laughs> Absolutely, Beaver. I mean, that's just the way it is. It's not just Star Wars games. It's just all games, right? Like all games, people people have a hard time separating nostalgia from the actual quality of of a game. You know. You'll, you'll see the same thing in, in any sort of game series, really. Like, you look at stuff like uh, Final Fantasy, for example. There'll be a lo load of people that are like, Final Fantasy VII is the greatest RPG ever created. And if you look at it in modern times, you're like, well, actually, you know, it's not that it's bad. It's, it's actually a very good game. But is it any better or worse than RPG games that have come since? Hard to say. Hard to say. Like, graphically, obviously not. It's very dated graphically. Control system's a little bit funky, you know? Uh, like, some of the mechanics and the bugs that exist in the game, they're very, very real. It's still a very, very good game. Don't get me wrong. But it's good conceptually in the age that it was made and created. 
but there'll still be people to this day that will swear blind by a game that they played what nearly 20 years ago as being the best of any genre has ever created ever and i think objectively that's probably not true but nostalgia plays a big part in all of this it's you know like possibly my favorite game ever to exist is Baldur's gate 2 shadows of arm with Throne of Baal expansion, even though Throne of Baal, the expansion pass itself is not... Hang on, let's go full screen. Seems like we're nattering. The expansion pass itself to Shadows of Arm, Throne of Baal, is n nowhere near as good of a game as Shadows of Arm is, as far as story is concerned. The mechanics that they introduce, the high-level abilities, are very good. Is Baldur's Gate 2 the best RPG ever made? Hell no. Hell no. I just have very, very fond memories of playing it for hundreds of hours as a kid. So it and is is Baldur's Gate three objectively a better game than Baldur's Gate two? Yes, in every sense of the word. However, given a choice, if I if I had say, say if I had like two hours to sit down and play a game, and they say, "Do you want to play Baldur's Gate three or Baldur's Gate 2? I'd probably go. Got two hours. I'll play Baldur's Gate two. Even though Baldur's Gate three is a better game. You know? It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Media in general, absolutely rabid. Media, books, everything, really. FF7 was a superb game? Absolutely. It really was. Just got home from work, head to the YouTubes, my doppelganger Mr. Scribble says, Mysteries of the Sith. <laughs> Hell yeah, Helen X, how you doing, brother? We're doing good around here, buddy. Absolutely, I see. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 crazy. It's crazy. It's really interesting. It's really interesting. It's very hard not to get coloured by nostalgia in general. You know? It even happens. It's like any sort of consumption, really. Um, so... So I, I try to keep that in mind when I'm when I'm looking at stuff, but it's it's an internal bias that we all have. It's very difficult to look past it. Oh my god, Legend of the Dragoon. What a great game that was. <laughs> I loved that game as a kid. It's criminal that, that it never got any sort of sequel. I although, hands up, I never finished that game because I never owned it. When that game came out, I was very young. Well, not very young. Um I did not have financial freedom. We didn't have a lot of money. So for me, like buying a game when we were a kid was something that was done on my birthday. That's when I got to buy a game. Um, and it didn't help that I, you know, my, my, my parents were very much like, no, you're not going to waste your time playing games. It was like very frowned upon in my household. Um, so having the opportunity to, to buy and play games was very limited, but what I could do was I could rent games. So I'd go to the local video store and I'd rent a game for a while, and Legend of the Dragoon was one of the games that they had at my local rental. Um, so I, I, I rented that a couple of times actually trying to, trying to beat it, but it's a very long game and it's not like I had endless time. I, I wish it was a game that I'd finished. It was a good, good fun game. Who remembers Empire Strikes Back for the Atari 2600? Uh, didn't have one. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I am old. I am old, yeah. But back in the days of the PlayStation 1, the PS1 era, it was a good day for gaming. It was a good era for gaming. The PS2 was was really good era for gaming as well. But uh, back then, yeah, you could go to the video store. Rent VHSs or like I I remember when my video store you used to be able to rent out Sega Mega Drive games or Genesis for you guys in in the states. You like Force Unleashed? I played Force Unleashed. I think I played that on the PlayStation Three. I think it had a remake, and I I remember blitzing through that on the PS Three. Final Fantasy Tactics. I played that on the Game Boy. I think. Jedi Power Battles. That game was hard, Beaver. That game was really hard. 
I only ever played that at my mate's house, but I remember playing it and thinking, God almighty. Xeno Gears, yep. How much for a Hello Kitty Island Adventures playthrough? A thousand pounds. Hello Kitty Island Adventures. I don't even know if that's an actual game, I see. <laughs> I am that old. Ellie is vintage, 1977. Nice. You remember the video stores that were private shops on the neighborhood corners? Existed way before Blockbuster. Yeah, I mean, the Blockbuster wasn't even a thing, I don't think, in the UK. Um, so all of our, like, there's there's a um, there's a store in the UK called Spa. That's like a, a grocery store, I guess you would call it. But a very small one. And they, they used to rent videos. Um, but there was also an independent on the um, on the pier on the pier in in my hometown um that was just just a little, tiny little hole in the wall that well, wasn't really a hole it was more like a corridor almost that was just a video rental place right next to an amusements the arcade i used to love going in there like it's really weird how life changes but i go back and i think about my days being a kid going out to town just as a young boy and like, I used to love going in the arcade, and I was never allowed to play anything. Or you know, I was maybe maybe on a weekend, my dad might give me a pound that I could put into something like Time Crisis. But I used to love just going into arcades and looking at things, just looking at the games. You know, just looking at the graphics of of like those old. Um, like Jurassic Park rides where you'd sit in a truck and you'd get a gun out and you'd shoot stuff. Or like I said, there was, I remember at one point there was one where it had motion sensors and you're a cop and you could move like this, or there'd be like a Mortal Kombat 2 cabinet and stuff like that. I remember that feeling of being a kid sat in an arcade with no money, but I, it didn't matter to me. I just, I just really enjoyed looking at stuff. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that sort of thing it was really cool. And now I could quite happily go into an arcade and just play whatever I want, I guess. But I still remember that feeling of wonder. Feel you on the notion of, of gaming being frowned upon. Yep, grew up in that. Most of your gaming memories are people playing games like GTA V, Skyrim and the like. And it wasn't until my dad eventually traded up his 360 for an Xbox One where I started gaming, even if it was casual. And it was a nightly thing, yeah. Old and bold. Nothing wrong with us, bald and mean shave head. Yeah, yeah, we're we're clean. We we it's just it's just to reduce friction. That's all it is. Did I ever have the chance to play the pod racing arcade game? I did. I did once. Yeah, they didn't have it in my local arcade, but I remember having a trip to Cardiff, where I live now, as a kid, because my auntie used to live here, and there's um there's a bowling alley in the Red Dragon Center, and that has, that has an arcade section, and I remember playing it there a very long time ago. With the current state of the game, MM is going to... Mon Mothma is going to R5. Do I give her the two Zetas, or are they a waste at this point? I mean, Mon Mothma does still have value. It's just whether or not it has value to your account right now. I remember when arcades were everywhere. None cost more than a quarter. Um, so much fun. People surrounding the best player, watching them get high scores. You miss the old days. Yep. We have a Star Wars museum in Germany. Where they have that pod racing arcade. No way. Closest was the two screen theater that the, the cop game and Chuck E. Cheese an hour away. Oh man. No way, Wolf. That's amazing, dude. Friction reduction, yep, yep. Uh, right in that one. Yeah, it's, I mean... I I could pretend like I just shave my hair off and, and donate it to kids struggling with cancer, but that would be disingenuous of me. I'm trying to think what the very first game I ever played was. And I, I think it was something like James Pond on my dad's Atari. Because he had a PC. Well, it was like, it looks like one of those old school PCs, you know. It was an Atari of sorts. Thoughts on the video core thing? So I don't know a whole lot about it, Malev. My, 
the gist of what I understand is essentially there was a mole in one of the guilds. I don't know if it was VDO or Core. And he was feeding TW information to his guild, right? So that they would know the defensive plan and they could plan appropriately to directly counter, right? That's that's the extent of my knowledge and probably the extent of how many craps I give about it, really. I think it's a, a scummy thing to do. I, like, I think it's it's it completely cheapens the experience. In general, cheating does, right? You shouldn't, shouldn't do it. It's like... It's poor sportsmanship, for one, you know? It's poor sportsmanship. It cheapens the victory for yourself and it completely robs the other team. I don't even know if they even won, even with all that information. Because it's obviously not everything. You can you can know the defense and then you can still fluff it up on offense. Or you can be less efficient. However, it doesn't really impact me, so I have a hard time caring. I'm just like, yeah, okay, fine. So some cheater in a gauntlet guild got found out for spreading TW information like it shouldn't happen they should be named and shamed and the uh, you know the offending guild should hold their heads in shame and say something publicly about it if they care to it's not like this sort of thing i don't know i i can't imagine this sort of thing happens very frequently but uh, i don't know 007 Goldeneye? Boy, oh boy. Yeah, I never really got to experience it. Odd job, crybabies. Earliest memories of gaming is Master of Terrace Cassie. Battletoads, Jedi Power Battles, Donkey Kong Country. Ooh, yes. Burger time on your uncle's Intellivision. My god. Hey, peace out, Mole. Thanks for joining, buddy. We're just shooting the breeze here more than anything, aren't we, guys? We're just shooting the breeze. I'm just going to um, quickly use up the rest of my refreshes here, farming this datacon data before I uh, miss out on the refresh. There we go. Just simmed it all. We've only got one arcade out here, and I don't get to. And you get to drink. Oh, okay. It's like a mini Las Vegas area of town, minus the gambling. Nice. Finished Conquest and started the chill. Yep. Yeah, well, we red boxed earlier today, and I was just throwing crappy teams at the Sector 5 bonus node to get some Datacron materials. Don't need to. Done it now. We're just going to be simming the rest of this Conquest. I love it when it's an easy Conquest. That's a lot of hair. Donated it all to Locks of Loves. Locks, Locks of Love, days before Christmas 2007, went from a ponytail to a shaved head that day. And you just shaved your head ever since? Really? That's crazy. I mean, good on you. Hey, good night, dancing. Watching the older kids doing the finish him in Mortal Kombat at the arcade was the most badass thing to see as a kid. Obi-Wan, am I remembering that correctly? But did, didn't the old Mortal Kombat cabinets used to have the moves and like the finishes written onto the cabinet so you could actually see well, you know, this is Sonya Blade. This is how you do her such and such move. This is how you do her finisher. Wasn't it actually written on the cabinet? I swear they used to have... They were like sections where you could actually see the move sets. Mortal Kombat used to be incredibly difficult to pull off those finishes as well. Like, you had to be so precise with the button inputs. And a lot of them were like, you need to be standing five feet away. Or you need to be standing right next to them. Or you need to be on the other end of the screen. It was really difficult back in like the Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3 days. Maybe maybe it was just Hellenix remembers. Like I I I swear I used to see that, but maybe maybe it wasn't on all of them. Mortal Kombat cabinet with moves on. Just seeing if I can find one.
it move fast. Wondering if anyone has created a quick tip sheet for MK cabinets with move lists and finishing moves. Hmm. Maybe if I just look at image searches. Yeah, I remember stuff like this. Stuff like this, so that it would go over the screen and you could see a little bit of information and there'd be like moves and stuff here. You see how it's got like player information around the side? The old S and K cabinets were, had the moves list. MK3 was the bomb. Mortal Kombat 1 was the very first game I ever bought. And I bought it on the Sega. The Sega Mega Drive. <laughs> Basic moves. But um, yeah, Mortal Kombat 3. I had that on the PlayStation 1. I bought Mortal Kombat 1 on my birthday when I was young for the Sega Mega Drive. It was the, one of the very first... No, it was the very first game that I personally bought. And it was an 18 game, and my mother bought it for me with my money. Because <laughs> I used to I used to get um, pocket money, obviously. Like, lo like a lot of kids, I'd get pocket money. I used to get something like... Was it a pound a week? My mom used to give me a pound a week, and I remember I had this little... I had this little... Um, purple, almost like pencil case, like a hard plastic pencil case that was kind of like the shape of a phone, you know, probably a bit bigger than that. Um, and it could, I, I still remember it, very tactile, you could clip it down. And every week my man would give me one pound, which is like a dollar, right? Um, every single week. And I used to get that and I could stack like five, five of them in this case. So it could like stack maybe five high, maybe three high. I can't remember now. But I remember every single week I would put my pound in there and I would save up all year so that on my birthday I could buy a game. And that was the game that I chose to buy. It was Mortal Kombat 3. Uh, Mortal Kombat 1, sorry. Um, and as soon as my mom saw the game, she was like, you're not playing that game. <laughs> she was like, that's too violent. That's too grotesque. You can't have that. I got very upset. I got very upset indeed. But, you know, I must have been... I don't know. I don't know how old. It must have been like... Let me think. I was probably somewhere like seven or eight. Seven or eight years old. Because I'm pretty sure... I... The, the, the PlayStation 1 came out in like 1996 or something like that. And I got it a year after that in 1997 I remember still being in primary school with my Mega Drive because I remember having the Metal Gear Solid Special Edition collector's box thing in my last year of primary school so it must have been before that so I must have been like 7 or 8 crazy crazy business how we start a long love affair with gaming in general. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Right, let's um let's at least spend these Datacron materials, shall we? See if we can roll anything fun. Doop, doop. Oh, looks like it's been a new day rolled over. A new day rolled over. Let's see what we've got. Your mum used to do that once again. Day, wait. You said pound, like the currency. He nope. My mum used to give me a pounding every day. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, back in those days, back in those days, you know. Parents, uh, parents would give you a clip around the ear, you know? They would give you a clip around the ear. I mean, I was very fortunate that I never really, you know, got any sort of proper punishment. Um, I, um, 
I, I wasn't obviously the, the best behaved kid. I was probably, you know, at least a little bit irritating for my parents. But no kids are perfect, right? Ooh. Yeah, I'll take that. Ooh. Yeah, I'll take that. Nice. Good mods. Zeta Mats, yes. I, I'll have one Zeta ready for Jar Jar when he comes out. Pick that up. Yep. Get that data case rolling as well. And... Mm, we're okay for the reroll mats. Hey, peace out, Beaver. I think the first game you bought on your own was Elevator Action for the NES. Elevator Action. Did did they actually make... It's really funny. Like, old games used to make games, like, about anything. I suppose that's still true to this day. We've got, we've got Goat Simulator, for Christ's sake. Um, but you did used to get some really weird games. Hey, no worries, Crusher. You're very welcome, buddy. I hope it was helpful to you, man. Back when it when it wasn't frowned upon. Funny enough, I don't blame them. My cousins were bad kids. <laughs> oh man. I look like someone who has or had ADHD. I didn't realize that was a look. I probably do. I don't know. Maybe I do. Cheese vids are life-saving. Oh, thanks, Hen Linux. I've no idea. Like, my brother seems convinced that he's got ADHD. Um, and so does my sister. All I know is I have short-term memory. Like, a very bad short-term memory. Whether or not that's an indicator for ADHD, who knows. I, I always feel like I've got a lot going on in my head. But, um, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. The way I look at it is, if I do have some sort of condition... Knowing about it, it's not going to change anything, is it? I'm still going to be me. So, I don't care. I'm just like, yeah, all right, cool. If if, I, if I've got something, then fine. I don't care. <laughs> like, I'll just, I'll keep doing what I'm doing. You know, it's just a thing, right? Did anyone have the Atari Star Wars game where you kill ATSTs. I think it was called Empire Strikes Back. Somebody in chat definitely did because they were talking about it earlier. I can't remember who it was. Again, short-term memory. Terrible. Um, but yeah. You think you still have the cartridge? There you go. It was Hellenics that had the Empire Strikes Back game. Yeah, I definitely didn't. Might as well keep spending this currency. It's, it's there to be spent, isn't it? Ooh, protection. Ooh, double protection. The first game I bought was Zelda for the original Nintendo. Now I feel old. That was the side-scroller as well, wasn't it? That was a side-scroller, wasn't it? I have a short-term memory thing too. It's called Dabs. And I don't partake, Wolf. I don't partake. I just have terrible short-term memory. Like, genuinely, something, somebody can say something to me and I can forget it within seconds. It was ATS, AT, AT 80s, not ATSTs. Hell, he's a Star Wars nerd. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Honestly, I don't feel like I necessarily need any more Datacrons. I kind of just want to get 30 level 9 Datacrons just to say I've done it. Or get close to. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's 7, 14. I would need two full more rows and then some. Ooh, that's a lot. Calispera. What does Calispera mean, Wolfie? Now that's a lot of crons. Yeah, have you ever maxed out on level 9 crons, Wolfie? I, I've never done, like, I think this is probably the closest I've been, and that's not even close, right? That's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 level 9 crons, a couple of level 8s. I just, I just want to do it to say that I've done it, you know? It's a really stupid reason to want to have a full inventory of level 9 crons. It means good evening. Ah, okay, cool.
You haven't gone all that crazy? Yeah, that's fair. Asteroids for the Atari 2600 was your first. My dad and uncle loved Yar's Revenge. Pitfall. God, I remember Pitfall. <laughs> I remember um, when I was young, one of my brother's friends came from quite a well-off family. And um, I remember it was not long after the PlayStation 1 was out and he had like every game as a kid because his parents would, would quite happily buy him a bunch of games and stuff like that. And I always used to be in awe going over to his house and be like, wow, look at all his games, man. That's so cool. I remember, like that's where I first saw Crash Bandicoot. The very first Crash Bandicoot game. And I was like, wow, this game is incredible. And it is. Crash Bandicoot is an amazing game. This is a Star Wars collection game, man. Everything we do is some kind of crazy. Uh, you, you're not wrong, actually. You're not wrong. Back in those days, those, those old games were really hard. I remember playing. I remember playing a game on my dad's Atari. That used to scare the bejesus out of me. There was two, actually. One was Alone in the Dark. Alone in the Dark, the very first game, scared the crap out of me. I, I, I remember there being, like... It was obviously like a almost like a side-scroller, but it's a 2D platformer. And you'd start off in some caves, and there'd be, like, these little leeches on the floor that would come out with a, a pincer, and they'd stab you on the foot, and you'd die after, like, two hits. You could You could, like, kick them, you could slide your foot on the floor to, like, squish them. But you go to a certain point and there would be, like, this shadowy wolf. Like, big shadowy wolf that would chase you from one screen to another. And, it, it like, as a kid, I was terrified of that game. Absolutely terrified of it. Um, but the memory of it sticks with me. Cali is good. Espera. Evening. Cali espera. Good evening. I love it. Arnold has posted a video. Probably on Jar Jar release date and, like, looking at the, the kit picture, right? That's what I'm imagining it's about. Let's have a look. Grandmaster Yoda rework? Oh, because of the uh, the data mined GMY thing. Yeah. Should we should we do a should we do a live reaction to Arnold's video? What do you think, guys? We could become reaction content creators. And welcome back. That was rather loud, Arnold. And welcome back. Oop. Oop. What's he saying? We have a, a lot of heat, fun stuff, and some I can see Jar Jar Binks in the back there. This weekend, y'all. Um... The biggest thing we already have our kind of little tidbit teaser for Jar Jar Binks. We see what he looks like as well. Wait a minute. Some of the names of his Sorry. abilities, but also something that's getting people excited. It looks like maybe a Grandmaster Yoda rework is coming for sure. At the minimum, looks like a touch up in terms of the looks here. Mm. And the thing I want to start off with could be is a little bit of drama that is going on. It might just be uh, graphical rework. I, uh, some of you guys know I have my fingers in multiple pies. Uh, I don't just do YouTube, but anyways, I was doing stuff all day, and I also was starting the work on hopefully this weekend should be out uh, my uh, galactic legend ranking videos looking at a lot of data compiling yeah. stuff really excited to put it out there some interesting stuff that i found while going through the data so hopefully we can get that out this weekend but towards the later end of the day i started catching wind of this cheating uh, <laughs> allegation going on here now the post has been taken down from reddit there's like a isn't um isn't arnold in is it is he in 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 one of the core guilds i'm not even sure I don't know if this directly impacts him, but I wonder if it colors his his opinion on it. Secret Galaxy Heroes uh, Reddit page that still has it up, that it hasn't been taken down. It's ran by completely different groups of folks out there. And I talked to both Ka and Ma. Those are the two parties right now that are kind of feuding over this drama that's going on. And I know both in person. I've been in both guilds. I was in Ma previously. And the only reason why I left is because I wanted to do this cool series for Facebook. When I had a little deal going on, on Facebook, I want to show some other stuff I do. You know, I do a lot of battles and stuff behind the scenes. But Maul wasn't cool with me doing territory war stuff. But Carl was. 
that I have the time. Now I don't. I can't do much territory. Cool, more pull. Stuff, but One there of was a brief period of time where I was able to do territory war stuff. But you guys know my opinion. I <laughs> I don't know if I say absolutely despise, but I don't really like territory wars. And even when I was That's in Maw Caw and a couple of the guilds before, the role that I play in these guilds because I am so busy. I don't manage the guild. I don't do recruitment. I don't do any battle planning, anything like that. They're I feel that. Chasing me down for tickets, raids, doing my TW battle. So I don't want to say. My this this is the, the this is the sad reality of being a content creator for a game that you play, is that it's it's surprisingly difficult to work full time job, do stuff like guides on on YouTube and stream and stuff, and then still turn up in a timely fashion for for things. It can be really hard to actually be there for everything in a timely manner. I don't know what other responsibility arnold has but i imagine he's got a lot on his plate because he does a lot you know it like outside of the own swigger stuff so it's 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 something a lot of people really don't consider i'm a bad guild member but i do my stuff it just takes me a while arnold is demasiado melodramatico al hablar uh creo que i think you're saying that he's always melodramatic when he speaks is that what you're saying jorge around to it um, but basically the role that I play in the totem pole of both of these guilds, I'm basically the cashier at a McDonald's and there are <laughs> allegations that the general manager is embezzling money. And mainly what I want to do is just kind of give you a quick summary of what's going on here. And also, I, I guess, just kind of distance myself and dispel uh, this uh, here. There's, there's some people, you know, they're, they're putting, kind of putting me guilty by association, which isn't really. OK. All right. OK. I'm definitely going to sound off on this right here. Quite frankly, this is bullshit. All right? <laughs> uh, if, if people want to start pointing fingers at Arnold, saying that he's somehow embroiled in this, this, this drama between these guilds, that, that's clutching at straws, man. That is really clutching at straws. Like, believe me when I say, most content creators for this game do not do not want anything to do with officer duties or running a guild they don't you do not have the time to do that you know it's it's hard enough for people with no job or anything you know people with tons of free time to sit down and plan tw it gets harder again when you say oh let's look at the guy who's you know he, he just really enjoys playing the game also has a full-time job so maybe his hours are restricted you throw in a content creator who also streams and does videos all the time. The last thing that they want to do is also manage a guild. There's a reason why I stepped away from it and I have no interest in being an officer in a guild. It is a time commitment and a an expectation that I simply cannot fulfill. So for people to point the finger at Arnold and say, oh, Arnold, he is he's so guilty of this. Because he's in these big guilds, I'm sure he is aware of all this is going on and is helping and fueling it. Is just utter horseshit. Like he's not. <laughs> like I promise you, he probably had no idea because he's probably just. He said himself, he he gets pinged to actually do battles because he's late for them because he's got other responsibilities and stuff like that. He can't turn up. That's fine. I promise you, he's not involved in any way. When taken serious, is a full time job. It really is Hellenics. It, it quite literally, I've added up the hours. I, I literally do a full-time job when it comes to content creation, and I'm not even one of the busy content creators that's pushing out a crap load of videos all the time. You look at someone like Zareth, who puts out seemingly really long videos every day or every other day. Arnold puts out content every single day, long content with a lot of production value behind it, and usually some actual thought into them as well. Whereas, honestly, what I do is much less than that. You know, I do galactic challenge videos, which can sometimes take a while. Maybe they take me an hour. Sometimes they take 10 minutes because it's like, oh, this one just happens to be really easy. Um, but a lot of the videos that other people do take a lot longer to record and to plan and to edit, right? So even if I'm finding it hard to find time, I'm sure he is as well. Things, especially in a vast organization and stuff like that. I'm literally just the cashier uh, here. But anyways, I just want to make sure I get in front of it and talk about it here because uh, some people are concerned about, Sounds being, about right, Adam. being inside of Caw. But yeah, we're going to just address it, talk about it real quick. But yes, most people understand my position of territories and I talk to Caw and <laughs> Everyone knows that I have... Arnold no doesn't give a shit stuff. about TW. <laughs> so I spent the past two hours or so talking to people, figuring stuff out here. 
long story short, what's going on? I'll leave a link to this page right here, the non taken down Reddit post that's uh, going on here. But long story short, it's a he said, she said thing going on. Mm. Basically, to get to the core of it, Ka is alleging that there's someone over at Ma. Arnold does make good dollars if he chose to do this over being a lawyer. Um, I, I have no doubt. Well, we already know that he definitely makes good, or he used to at least make good money. I, I assume he still makes good money. Um, but he was able to, he was able to pay off all of his, all of his law school fees, right? And I, and I think that his only source of income was through his content creation, through his channel. Um, and that, that, that was not an insignificant amount of money when you consider it's not like all he was doing was paying that off. He still has to pay for a house and he has to pay for food and he has to pay for rent or whatever. You know, like he said, he has other commitments to pay for. He still has to live his life. And he was able to pay off a rather large, um, you know, um, law school thing. So he must be making good money. He must be making good money. Like very good money. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know his current situation. I, I've never looked. Um, I've never been on any sort of inside track with him. Um, so I, I can only make assumptions on what he's earning. That's disgruntled leaking battle plans over the call in advance before a territory war begins. And I don't keep up a territory war, territory war culture. It's way too much work for a game mode that really doesn't give any crystals. Not that big of an impact in the game. I regret 90% of my territory or Omicrons. Besides point, there are people, the gauntlet as they're called, they take it very seriously. And there's like espionage where people are sharing plans that they they learn from others, they're leaking stuff. But Ma, if you go through the screenshots, they are insinuating that someone at call, not necessarily Pimpo, but someone else is logging in to an account that's at Ma and taking a look at their battle plans. Uh, this is beyond the legging. As Arnold described it, they've got literal screenshots of officers saying they have defense and take, talking about using it several times. I'm guessing that's what this is, agree. Uh, P having VG defense, but not helping us out. Anyway, yeah, well, uh, he secretly DM'd all with plan before the attack phase. I have a DM of CP's stuff muted. I don't care about what they do. Uh, so obvious they got VG map. So somebody got the more Vanguard map, I guess. It was so shady to say that. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, it's definitely not an alleged, um, uh, like as he was calling it, espionage inside man mole. It obviously did happen, based on what you're seeing here. You know, there was definitely somebody spreading information. I, I've already said my piece on it, thinking you know I think it's underhanded. To do it, I think it breaks the spirit of it, but I also don't really care. You know, I think it's kind of a scummy thing. And so their TW map before territory war. He began. means Pimpo. Oh, the uh, mod father, so right? The first thing I want to say is that a lot of these people in the whale guilds, a lot of them, you know, they share, sell accounts. And we're not going to talk about that that aspect of it all. But the point is, uh, sometimes there's people who have access to accounts, even though they got rid of the accounts. So you can see how messy things can get. Yeah, he's talking about people that have sold accounts from other people. They still have the login information. A lot of the time, if you buy and sell an account, you can't... They, they, they won't give you access to, like, the Google Play Store account. They'll link it to a Facebook account and give you the Facebook login details. So they'll always have access to that account. It works on a, on a good faith measure, essentially. Um, if Keep that in mind if you ever think about buying an account. One, it's against terms of service, so CG can and often do uh, exercise their right to ban you from that account and close it. Uh, two, there's nothing that you can do realistically to stop them from regaining access to that account unless they have given you access to the actual Google account information and you change the details. But even then, there are ways to reset passwords and stuff like that. So it's, you have to be very, very careful. From my conversation with Ma, conversation with Ka, and trying to read through these out of... Sorry. When I was making my monthly poorly animated pseudo cartoon that originally aired on the Escape podcast show, it was taking me around 40 to 50 hours per week and exhausted. That's a lot, Hellenics. The funny comment was them saying they used the maps, complaining that they still lost. <laughs> uh, that's embarrassing. Having Having the... Knowing what your opponent is setting on defense and still losing is embarrassing. Uh, 
Well, t- to be honest, Helix, Hellenix, I, I don't do a whole lot on the production side. I, I do all of my own work, obviously. Like, I, I don't earn enough money on YouTube to pay for editors or anything like that. Um, I do all all of my own work. Things like that you see around here, this is all commissioned stuff that I've requested. But when it comes to making a YouTube video, I do all that. I don't, there's not a heck of a lot that I do in production. I try to keep all editing down to a minimum because it's a very time consuming task. And if I want to push out enough content, I need to make it as easy as possible for me to do so. Arnold has got, he's got a bunch of screen setups. He's got multiple cameras. He's obviously got his large green screen setup. He must have four or five cameras, I would assume, Arnold does, based on the different angles that we see. There could be some, which is actually just one camera that he's flipped, um, so it looks like he's talking from a different angle, and then obviously the rest is just blue, uh, green screened. Um, but he, like all of his different um, like uh, screen faders and stuff like that, he's obviously commissioned and he's built up over time to just drop into his videos. It's cool. It's ready. It's very good. Good value, production value. No TV this week, so let's get some drama going. Absolutely, Thatcher. TW is a gamer that rewards you for playing. All I do in mine is place defense. You still get the rewards whether you win or lose. Um, pretty much. Usually, uh, like the 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 more extreme the guild gets, the more you have to actually engage with it. You can't just set a defense and expect to still stay in the guild. But yeah, pretty much. And hey, I'm Thatcher. How you doing, buddy? Contact screenshots that are going on between some exactly Zoid. over at call. It's hard to really give 100% proof. And even when I talked to them all, they said they can't really 100% prove that someone at call logged in to see the battle plans. Uh, I, I, I asked people at call, can't you guys just say who's leaking and be done with it? I, the, I was told it's more complicated than that. So, so right now, he said, she said drama between two of the biggest guilds in the game. <laughs> Yeah, Arnold can't say. It's, it's basically like they they might not be telling him, or they might say we have that information. We're not don't don't spread it. <laughs> essentially, he he's probably being truthful, and they probably just don't want him to say anything because he has a large platform. He's got a big soapbox to stand on, uh, and holds a lot of sway over the community. I you know, it doesn't look good for them. But realistically speaking, it's it's the Gauntlet Guilds. Almost everybody who watches this video is never going to see a Gauntlet Guild in TW. You, you, like, do you really care? I do want to say it's kind of funny. Uh, so it is confirmed that they got the intel. Uh, the cause is claiming someone leaked. That's it. awesome, Wolfie. I, I believe most of the battles versus Mulligan. I don't keep track. Too. Yeah, pain. Ask me to do a battle. I'll hop in, do the battle, and I'll get out. Uh, but I believe they lost <laughs> versus Moth still, despite that. I could be wrong. I, I, I again, I don't keep up with territories, the hierarchy, the the espionage, the drama. That's very kind of you to say, Hellenix. Um, I I worked I've I've worked hard on the setup to try and make it look at least a little bit professional. I don't think it's a I don't think it's great and I don't think it stands up compared to a lot of other people's, but I've tried to make it look good and I've made a concerted effort at least to make the the microphone audio sound good. Scripting is something I don't do. I I I I've never script I've tried doing scripts. I don't work very well with scripts. Sometimes I'll have notes and I'll be like talk about this, talk about that. Um but I I I, I don't like scripts. Um, I just worked as a kid. I used to go to, um, a youth theater. So I I used to love stage acting. Um, and I find myself being more comfortable just talking, just talking. As long as I have a vague idea of where I need to go. It's often why I'll miss bits of crucial information when I'm putting my videos out and people say, oh, you forgot about this. I'll be like, damn, I did forget about that because I might not have made a note on it, or maybe I made a note on it and I didn't talk about it. <laughs> so I don't tend to do scripts, but yeah, it's still a lot of work, even with doing it the way I do it. Why would I care? I'm here for chaos, indeed. Jonathan, all I want to say is that if something does come out to tip the scales one way or another, if something Thank does you. come out and it was 100% proof, I appreciate you, Helen. Did in fact log into a Ma account. And they used it for an advantage for the guild, even though they don't think they won, despite the advantage. 
I will leave call right away. I want nothing to do with that. For me personally, not just for Galaxy Heroes, but life in general, trust and integrity is the most valuable asset. And once you lose even a little bit of it, in my opinion, you lose all of it. You know, and not to say, you know, same thing with association. Even though the entire guild might not be guilty of it, I just don't want to be associated with that if that is indeed what's going on inside of uh, Gal mm. or the call leadership, if that's the case. But as, all, as far as I can tell, there's it's a he said, she said, I'm going to kind of sit in the sidelines and just kind of see what happens out of it. As I told Ma when I was talking with them, and the, again, they understand that I have nothing to do with it. They, they weren't even concerned. It's interesting, actually. It's interesting. Interesting stance he's taken on it. I, I understand his, his position. He's like, he doesn't want to be associated with anybody that's um allegedly cheating i i don't think it, i don't think it's allegations i think it looks pretty clear cut that there's something has been happening there right but earlier on in the video he was talking about he was talking about how players in gauntlet guilds do a lot of espionage you know there's always people talking you know scouting out their opponents and trying to figure out what their defenses was and doing all this stuff to get an idea of how they set up their defense it, I, it's already part of maybe not to the same extent as literally logging in and looking at someone's defense and using that leaked information to form it but there's already a degree of espionage going on in core and it's already been widely accepted that that's what they do is it realistically much different probably where'd you draw the line where'd you draw the line oh thanks Zoidberg. appreciate that man about me but again just some people on reddit were again assuming by association of it again like i said you know cashier you can't associate them with the general manager embezzling money if that's an, a, an alleged uh situation going on but again if i do find something that's one way or the other yeah uh i'm not loyal necessarily to any guild i just want to be of great people that are having fun and uh doing their best in the game i but i don't want to be associated if there's that's some fair. business going and i'm gonna admit too again i don't know the culture of territory wars <laughs> i don't want to get that involved with it but if uh, I, I don't know how commonplace it is for espionage, I don't know maybe if call people have leaked the call plans, the mall, or if, uh, how often mall leaks the call, and how all these other people in the gauntlet is this commonplace? I'm I'm one hundred percent positive that any guilds within an alliance are going to share TW defenses. They're going to be like we faced off against such and such guild two weeks ago. This was their defense. 100% TW officers are going to be sharing that information. I don't think it will spread wider than outside of the gauntlet. Um, but uh, there is no way that they keep that information secret. As soon as, as soon as that TW defense has been seen, it's going to get spread around, not widely. I don't think it's going to get, go everywhere. I think it's going to stay within the tight-knit group of guilds that exist at the top. But... It, I, I think it would be foolish to assume otherwise. <laughs> Ellie. <laughs> I don't know. For me, it doesn't sit well with me, but, you know, I understand life isn't uh, perfect, you know? It's like we want to assume that our governments are ran, you know, you know, truthfully, you know, there's no sleazy hands and greasy hands exchanging stuff. But the fact that matters, we know that's kind of out there. We just hope it's not as bad as you would think it is. So anyways, I just want to make sure I get out there. Um, yeah, this is all news to me. And I hope that the truth does come out. If Maul was wronged, I gosh, that absolutely sucks. But at the same time, I hope people just aren't causing drama and just, you know, throwing it at call because, you know, this, you know, it's, it's yeah. really hard to say. There's no 100% concrete proof except that Ka has it. How did they get it, though? <laughs> That's where it ends right there, at least as far as mm -hmm. I can tell. Um, I'm just an impartial person in the, ma in the matter of all this. So, uh, I think, long story short, like I'm 100% convinced that Arnold has got no, um, no... like He doesn't have any skin in the game here, as it were, um, in, in this. He's had no interaction with it. I don't think he's got any blood on his hands as as far as cheating is concerned. Honestly, I'm sure he doesn't give a crap. Um, I, like, I play TW to enjoy it, to win, to get the rewards, just because I'm kind of a competitive person like that and I want to. That doesn't mean I care enough. And even in my guild, which is one of the biggest guilds in the game, and that takes TW relatively seriously. 
we're not sweaty to the point that we're talking about, you know, uh, any sort of espionage into other people's defenses. Now, do some of the TW officers get information about guilds that they match up with? They probably do. They probably know people in the community and they say, oh, it's such and such guild. I know somebody who is an officer in this guild and they faced them last week or two weeks ago or whatever. I'm going to check in with them. What did they set on defense? That probably happens. That probably happens. Hey, Burrito, welcome back. The whole thing is crazy. I do believe Arnold is giving us some good background. I, 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 like, I think getting out angry at Arnold about this is just a really dumb thing to do. Well, let's hope something gets figured right. out of this, but again... I, 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 That's the chess the match, swapping defenses, I for just, sure. I don't get the, the, the super try hard <laughs> oh, of territory wars. It's not like there's a territory war championship. There's no exclusive character. There's no, like, tons no. of crystals. There's no Territory War Championship yet. Yet. I, I've put this forward before, but I do fully expect somewhere down the line in the future for CG to implement the same sort of GAC um, leagues and divisions to Territory Wars. I expect that to happen. When? I don't know. But I expect it to happen. Oh, he's just talking about this um, core... Versus more Vanguard. I th is it more Vanguard? I, I can't even remember. It shows how much I care. Um, essentially, there's a territory war matchup where in the gauntlet, the top end guilds of TW, where somebody has supposedly or allegedly logged into an opposing player's account and checked the TW defense and leaked it um, so that they've got inside information, essentially. And he's getting embroiled in it because he exists within Cool. Um it's essentially Arnold's defending his his corner in this, and it seems pretty legit. Don't give CG any ideas. Oh, I'm sure they've got all their own. But you only need so many of those, so I don't get the sweat lord feeling of territories. But people do take it seriously, and regardless how I feel about it, it's still not cool if there is the alleged cheating that's uh, that's going on here. So, all right, moving on to the next point of conversation here, uh, Grandmaster Yoda. In the data mines today, got a, looks like we're getting a bit of a face of again. If you checked out the video the other day, it looks like a big update's coming. It also looks like the PC version's coming. I'm not sure if it's next week or soon to be after that. But uh, Grandmaster was found with a little bit of a facelift here. Definitely uh, different yep. than the more cartoony animated Clone Wars look. They're going more for the, the live action appearance of Grandmaster Yoda. So I don't know if maybe there's a, man, a Grandmaster Yoda rework would be mm -hmm. pretty awesome. Uh, so GMY was, I think he was the, he was the very first legendary, wasn't it? Didn't it go GMY then Palpatine as like the first two legendaries to ever come into the game? I wouldn't be against GMY getting a touch up. What what I would hope they would do is give him an, an Omicron. I think it would be really cool to have GMY with an Omicron, um, just to give him some some sort of elevated status. I don't think he needs a full rework, truth be told. And I think it's more likely that this is just a cosmetic update. Because they do occasionally just give people a facelift. You know? Um, GMY before palps? Gotcha. Yeah. I don't want to do TBW, TWs. <laughs> uh, not yet, Buffy, uh, Buff Baker. And as far as I know... But I wouldn't expect to see the rewards until the normal payout schedule for TB. He's mostly that he's super squishy and has been outclassed damage dealer pretty hard. Pretty much. Pretty much. He's still decent. He's got a good, like, it used to be that GMY used to be a very, very powerful attacker. Like, he used to really hurt. Like, back then, seeing GMY do 60 to 100,000 points of damage back then... You know, we're talking Sith raid days. That was really good damage. These days, people do that on a basic. Um, but he used to be able to be do, for his time, very, very good damage. It's kind of dropped off a bit now. And I feel like his main benefit is in his kit rather than his stats now. Because his kit is actually pretty good. You know, he's got AoE buff spread, which passes Foresight. Tenacity down. He's got a bonus turn on his first special. His second special can strip turn meter and it can stun. His basic can give him turn meter generation and foresight. His kit is actually very good. The problem is as well, though, is that JMK completely shuts down a large element of GMY's viability because you just 
like you can't you can't use Grandmaster Yoda under JMK. Like he loses. Well, you can, but he loses so much viability in that team. Um, and I think that's a bit of a bit of a shame because he just can't you know, can't gain that extra turn meter. He can't gain the turn meter from his AOE spread. Can't gain the turn meter from his basic. He's still very useful, but it just feels like, yeah. So he's kind of relegated to being in a JML team. And there his TM generation is almost a little bit better. Coining in GMY to a character over 50% health gives him like 50% turn meter. It's, it's actually pretty cool, but you don't care about his damage output anymore, you know? So it's, it's just, it's almost like the perspective for GMY has changed. I mean... You know what the th biggest disappointment of Grandmaster Yoda is that his leadership's not more powerful. His leadership is probably the uh, yeah massive heavy thing about his kit. And you think it should be more important. So I don't know if they're just facelifting him or you know generally when we see stuff like this, they also do some sort of a touch of like look at Mace Windu. They they updated him and then shortly after we got a new Mace Windu kit. So fingers crossed. I would love to see that. And then we uh, and yeah Baker Thrawn and and Ahsoka Fulcrum both got a. Um, a cosmetic update when the Ahsoka series came out, didn't they? But there's nothing... I, I mean, maybe they can say this is tying into The Phantom Menace, I suppose. They could kind of say that, right? Yeah, Sabine uh, as well, yeah. Going into the weekend, Tusk and me had given us a little bit of a teaser of Jar Jar Binks. Now, we don't have the kit reveal, but I assume, kind of like Queen Amidala, you get a little teaser picture, and then a couple days later we get the kit reveal. They might give us a kit reveal by next week. Um... Uh, I was like, I was thinking maybe closer to May fourth, but never born. If they're gonna release this Naboo raid soon, they gotta get Jar Jar ASAP. But we can see we have a couple abilities here. How would oh big Boomas and Wisa Warriors? So those are the basic and the special abilities. We have no idea what they do. I hope he's got like something that says Bombad General or something uh, of the of the matter. I don't know if they're gonna give him a leadership ability. Uh, the boss Ness is already kind of lead, but I think it probably makes sense that boss Ness stays lead. But uh, you know, we'll see. What Jar Jar's gonna bring to the table, and we also talked about the other day about crystal giveaways. They already gave out their oh, first yeah, that was kind of cool. Crystal rewards, right there. Congratulations! Insert name here: Pizza the Hut, uh, Vitruria, R. Delphic, and Jedi Bane. You got some crystals, so be sure to check that out. And uh, every week they're gonna be drawing new winners, so make sure you stay tuned on the. Uh, yeah, I never applied as as leader Zeta, but when I, by the time I was gearing up Jedi, we were we were in Old Republic. Basti was Basti came out. And she was far superior as a Jedi leader. The forums to keep up to date on all the rewards and giveaways and questionnaires they're throwing out there. So hopefully you guys can get some crystals and Anakin Vader shards and hopefully someone gets that big prize hmm. a couple weeks from now. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for today. Yep. Locking us in. Before Decent the video. Weekend starts rolling up. You're excited to finally get to the All Galactic Legends rank. I spent a lot of time, a couple days and uh, work on the video, going through data. <laughs> there's a lot of nuances. I know, right, Helly? Like, uh, excited to kind of show you some of the findings that I uh, pulled out of it. But anyways, people, thank you for stopping by. Make sure that weekend starts off nice and well. Leave that like, comment down below, subscribe so you're not missing a thing. And Go subscribe to Arnold, guys. He's a small content creator. He's just trying to find his way in the universe. Um, so, you know, do him a little bit favor from the tribe. Make sure you follow, uh, follow this new up-and-coming guy. I think his name's Arnold, something like that. Uh, yeah, that was cool. That was cool. It's, uh, I, I don't really do reaction content, but uh, that was a nice change of pace. <laughs>
Um, I've, I, uh, it, it's a little bit hard, obviously, because there's a lot of content creators and everybody streams at different times, but I've visited people like um, Captain Amazing. I've been in Rabid streams. I've been in Womprat streams. I've been in, obviously, all, all the guys that you would know I would be in, you know, like people like Wolfie and Calvin. Zareth very rarely because he's up very late for me. Um, who else have been in? Definitely more. So some rather obscure people. Um, and I, I always think that we should try and grow the community together. And I think a lot of people are making a concerted effort to try and do that. I, the, I ha there are very few people within the content creator sphere that I've interacted with that I've been like, yeah, what a jackass. I don't want to engage with that person. I, I can't even... I've been with Nooch a couple of times. Uh, Gerbil. Sorry, those have just popped into my head as well. They're not jackasses, guys. They're, they're really nice people, actually. Uh, Ukes. He was the guy that does the swagology stuff. Um, the trivia stuff. I'm not sure if he's done any more of those, actually. But they're usually pretty good. Who else have I been in? <laughs> so, um, I've joined the wonderful people at the uh, Scoundrels Cantina as well. They were great fun. I had a really good time on their podcast. Um, you know, th there's just, there's loads of people, man. There's loads of people. And I've got no problem rec making recommendations. And I think, I think part of it is as well, as a content creator, everybody remembers the the earlier days when you when you start streaming and how difficult it is to actually get anybody to talk in your chat, anybody to actually find you, follow you, subscribe to you, anything like that. It's so incredibly difficult when you're small to get noticed. Um, so even just a little thing like going into the chat and just saying hi and hanging out for five to ten minutes, just having a chat, even if their production quality isn't up to scratch, even if their mic doesn't sound amazing, even if the gameplay isn't great, just giving them a little bit of an encouragement can sometimes really, really help. So I try to do that where I can, but I don't have a hell of a lot of free time to do it. Um, usually, usually when I'm working, I'll have somebody stream on. If I remember, sometimes I get swept up in work, but if I, if I remember, I'll try and have somebody stream on and I'll occasionally talk with people. We are very spoiled, Heli. You've been involved in Twigger since day one. Compared to other communities, I was genuinely great. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of the community are fantastic. You know, it's a very supportive community. We have our little niche um, and it is a good place to be, but just finding time to support all creators can be hard can be hard certainly not easy all right you found the best swigger podcast it's these three guys that barely talk about swigger they just talk about random stuff and then they make fun of the one guy spending a lot of money on the game can't remember his name view cowboy i've got no idea doesn't sound like any sort of uh podcast that i would have any inclination or knowledge about we only talk Swigger on the Tribe Talks podcast. Nothing ever derails us. Actually, maybe maybe before we sign off this evening, you guys can give me some recommendations for a guest you might like to have on the show. Um, do I have a mod in chat right now? If there's a mod in chat, it would be greatly appreciated if you could sort that out. But if not, not a big deal. Um... Yeah, so this 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 Sunday for Tribe Talks, um, Karth can't make it. So if, is there anybody out there that you guys would quite like to have on the Tribe Talks podcast and we can see if we can get them on? It's a little bit short notice, obviously, but you never know in this world. <sighs> yeah. Sounds like something worth checking out. It does, doesn't it, right? Nooch or Gerbil owe you a visit? It's very difficult for those guys, though. That's that's the issue. Um, because Gerbil is, is like 3 a.m., I think, for the Tribe Talks podcast. I would never expect anybody to stay up until 3 a.m. on a Sunday to join the podcast. Um, and I believe, I believe Nooch works 12-hour shifts on a Sunday. Oh, I didn't get all of them. Oh, I'm using the wrong chat for it, that's why. Hold up, let me sort that out. Q. 
can, man. Oh my god, we're getting absolutely flooded here. Apologies, chat. Apologies. Try and sort them out now. We're just being bombarded by bots right now. Sorry, 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 sorry. Time difference with China is nuts. Yeah. RKP on the map. Hockey playoffs equals binge drinking. <laughs> Why are we getting so many from this one this one sentence? Trying to clean up all this crap. Just banning people left and right. God damn. Very sorry, chat. Very sorry. How annoying. How annoying. Um. Oh my god, they're still coming. They're still coming. The droids are invading, Esper. They are. I'll try and catch up with chat. Oh my god, I keep trying to catch up with chat and all we get is more people coming in. So, um, how about this, guys? If you could go over to my Discord and make a recommendation for people you might want to try and get on the show, and I'll see about it. Like, I can't make any promises for this Sunday, but I don't do enough effort in trying to get guests onto the show. I tried a couple times in the past, and unfortunately it's very difficult to get things off the ground and rolling. Um... And obviously, time zones really suck. What about the droid attack on the scribble? Um, yeah. Well, it was supposed to be on Tuesday, Burrito. It was supposed to be on Tuesday, but um, obviously my internet crapped out on Tuesday, which was really frustrating. So we'll we'll have another one on this coming Tuesday. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm gonna log off now anyway, because these bots are driving me nuts. Sorry, I was not active on the stream. Hey, don't you worry about it, unstoppable mate. Don't you worry, buddy. I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and find someone who's live right now, and we'll go and raid into them. Let's see who's live on the old YouTubes. First and foremost, add a redirect. Let's see. I can see that Ranger is live, but he's not got Thingamabob turned on, so I can't raid into Ranger on YouTube. Alright. I'll try and try and send you guys somewhere. Um, and we'll find someone else on Twitch now. I'm very sorry about all the bots. Very sorry about all the bots. Hopefully, wherever you go to next, they don't follow. But you never know. You never know. All right, guys. Thanks for joining. I will speak to you all very soon. Peace out and big love, y'all. Scribble, ah, Scribble, go get your ass to bed, dude. Unlock his balls, assume attack position, the Welsh are invading, we can't have that, alright, uh, end the whistling bird, fire the fruit on torpedo, let's go. Uh, you may get an ink watch of bots, well, I've got plenty of moderators that will ban them immediately, Scribe. Why, are you bringing the bots with you? Thanks, Scribe.